welcome back to computer programming laboratory that is subject code is 18 cpl 27 so this is this is the second semester that's why this is 27 right today we will discuss program number 10 from your syllabus the program number 10 is write functions to implement string operations such as compare concatenate string length right then convince the parameter passing techniques right here we have to uh, discuss string operations then parameter passing techniques right i hope you have studied what is a string then string compare what do you mean by comparison of a string what do you mean by concatenate of string how to calculate the string length then parameter uh, passing techniques in function chapter right the string related operations in string chapter then parameter passing techniques in fu function chapter in theoretically i hope you have discussed these concepts right then we we'll just i'll recall a string what is a string right then how to concatenate how to calculate a length then how to copy right those concepts just i'll recall a string i hope you know the definition of a string string is zero or more number of characters stored continuously within double quote right each data structure you will represent in double quote whether it is zero or more number of characters in a continuous memory location is called string means string is uh, a sequence of characters again zero or more number of sequence of characters represented in double quote right that is a string i zero means if that is a zero then that is called a null string if there are characters then that is called string again the uh, i hope you know the a uh, string right always string then how to differentiate a string and character right normally we will represent every character in a single quote same uh, with, uh, like that we will represent string in double quotes right then double quote means by default all strings ends with null character again there are many definitions then which data type ends with the null character again that was called the string in some of the textbooks right uh, again whichever you feel suitable whichever you understood properly that definition you can use right then how to store data in a string variable you may be knowing right uh, there is no data type uh, for declaring string as it is right we have to as i know string is a group of characters string is a group of characters string is a group zero or more number of group of characters represented in double quote right that's why since we know this we have the data type character by using that character we can declare string variable right that is we have declared here there is a character c means group of many more number of uh, values when you want to store under the same name that time you will go for array when you want to store more number of values under the same name definitely will go to array but in this case again more number of values they are storing but the only values here are characters data we are storing is a character that's why the name string right then character c of array you know how to declare array where they have declared array c of type character in that we are storing the characters right but how we are stored a character we are stored character as a string group of characters as a string that's why there are double quote right if you store with a double quote then that is a string right then again next one more again I, I think i hope you, you you may be knowing in single dimensional array and string when you are directly initializing you can write the size or if you miss size also it takes right that's why cf 15 as i told again in other programs you reserve for more use it for less right if you reserve for less you have to start using for more then it will give error that's why they are reserved for 15 but they are storing only four characters right actually you have stored four characters but by default as i told string and with null character means we have entered four characters, but actually that string contains five characters in both the cases that are above C and below C. Right? A, B, C, D we have entered, but all string by default ends with a null character, only additional character will be there always. Right? That's why the size of this string, it means size, means number of characters, is number of uh, values in this string, if you count actually, there are five. A, B, C, D are four, then last is null always. Right? In always all these strings. Right? Like that. If you want to initialize string directly, you can initialize string within a double quote. Or if you want to initialize character by character, character by character means A, B, C, D is a string, but how you are initializing here? Character by character, that is A character first. 
then next b then next c then next d then if you are going in a second method that is character by character at that time it is the responsibility of the programmer to at the end you have to insert the null character because you are not storing string as a string you are storing string as a character one character by character that's why again at the end if you want to convert that one to string then at the end you have to store null character then after that it will become automatically string right again both the methods he has explained here right that in if i store string abcd then that is array string is nothing but a one dimensional array one dimensional array, only instead of storing integer and instead of storing numbers here we are storing characters right here we are storing characters right that's why in index 0 if you are stored a b c d in the same order those will be stored always the array index starts with a 0 right then a will go to zeroth index of c array then b will go to first index of c array then c will uh, then next c will go to second index of c array that second means index number second but if you count really that is the third position right again i have told always you see index starts with a 0 then n set n minus 1 right then d will go to index 3 then always by default last character is null character whatever string length you take right whatever string length you take by default last index contains null character even though you are not stored in these two cases the last word the null in this because whatever you enter with a double code that will be treated as a string string is nothing but each data ends with null character that is a string that's why here by default null will come but if you are going by character by character that is your responsibility you have to insert string null at the end right then this is how the elements are stored in a string if you are storing a b c d if you are storing a b c d e f then e will come here f will come to fifth index then last six index is null always by default last index is a null right last last index is a null this is what string now here in this program what he is asking calculate string length calculate length of a string again i hope you studied the string chapter in theory right there is built in function available for calculating a string length that is str len of str len which directly gives string length means if you give str len bracket that name of that string in bracket name of that string then directly it gives this string length right if it takes input as a string gives output as an integer always that built in function whatever built in function i am talking that is str len str len open bracket close bracket that is the string length calculation built in function is available in c then within that bracket what you have to give parameter you have to pass as a string you have to pass string means nothing but like this if i take this as an example str len open bracket c close bracket if i give then it will give the length of this string what is the length of this string length of this string is 4 even though there are 5 characters but the, that function will not count none whatever you have stored that value will be counted by string length then what it has returned actually what is the input for this what parameter you have passed you have passed parameter as a c i hope you have studied parameter passing in function chapter parameter passing in function chapter you are passing c as a parameter c is of type character again that is a string right c is a string type it is taking string as an input but giving output what output you are getting length of a string length of a string is always in integer right always in integer that's why it accepts parameter as a string but returns integer as a output returns integer as a output that's why if i calculate the length of this string then that if, uh, that built in function will give 4 as a output right but in this program what is expecting he is expecting you to write own code for that str alien he is expecting don't use that function which is available in c program don't use that function you write your own code for str alien right what that str alien was is doing that code you write in your program right then check how str alien works right that he is, he is telling that's why we have to write a code for that means my str alien means that my function has to count number of characters in a given string or my function has to count not str alien uh, such a way i have to write a program right that's why how to write that program again take a loop take a loop then start at index 0 then count till not null count till not null once you reach to null then 
check the i value first i is 0 then next i will become 1 then i is 0 then check a whether a is a null you check whether a is a null no a is not null right then i will be incremented then i will become 1 i is becomes 1 then check what the content at this position is it a null no then increment i then come to next then check this is it a null always you check it for null always you check it for null right if it is not null then only go if it is a null then stop is it a null not null then go next i will be incremented i becomes 3 then you go here right you go here then increment i then i becomes here then you check is it a null is not equal to null no it is null then you stop you stop then return the i value return the i value then nothing but return the i value if you return i this value again it will return 4 because you have counted from 0 to 4 you want 4 actually you want 4 whatever it may be you want 4 you return this one automatically it will give 4 right just like we have implemented this code i will go to code afterwards right then next function is expecting us to concatenate concatenate is nothing but join join the strings right concatenation function is actually again there is a function str cat built-in function is available in c programming str cat which concatenates two strings if the function is like this str cat open bracket give one string from a second string because it concatenates two strings that's why it is expecting two string as the input parameter passing is you have to pass two string as the input to this function that is str cat open the bracket string 1 comma string 2 then it gives the result one cat in that string only one string it takes two string as the input but when it is giving output it gives only one string one string as the output then how it does right how it does for example you have s1 and s2 strings there is s1 and s2 that is no then program there is one string no program that is k m o w as i told last always last character in the string is null right then next one more String is program P R O G R A M. Then last character is a null. We have two strings in different two uh, words in two different strings. One is in S1, other is in S2. These are two strings. S1 string, S2 string. But I want only one string that is S1. I want only one string that is S1. Means this has to be joined to this. I want to join this. Then I want S1 only must contain no program. I want S1 to be contain no program. Right, that will be done by str cat. How that will be done? Like this. Means if you use str cat built-in function, then s1 comma s2. Just if you give this input to this function, str cat s1 comma s2. Then after concatenation, you will get your result will be there in s1. S2 anyway s2 contains the original values, but if you see the s1, then s1 contains both the strings. Earlier s1 contains only no. Earlier s1 contains only no. But after executing this command, S1 contains both the strings. Its own string and string of this string. Means data of this string will be joined here. Means I have joined. That's why concatenate are joining. Right? Then S2 remains same. Yes, there is no change in S2. Then if you display S1, you will get result. If you display your S1, you will get result. Always this string contains a result, not this string. But whichever variable you are using at a first parameter, this string you are using at a first it will contain that string. If you reverse S2 and S1, if you, hear, if you write S2, if you write S1 here, then it will contain program no. That time it will contain program then no. Right? That's why very careful. Each parameter you are using first, the result will be in there. That parameter joining of the second. Right? This is what. Then how it will be done? So it will be done. For doing this one, you are just your join. Means you see S1. S1 already has K, N, O, W. Here also S1 has K, N, O, W. Here S1 has a null, but in null position I have P, which is the first character of this string. It's the first character of this string. I have removed null, then I have at the null place I have stored P. Then afterwards R, O, G continuously till M, because this is M, last character of this. Then at the end, again I have to place null, because if you want to consider this as a string, string must end with a null, right? Then this null has to be copied here. This only one null now because in the previous, uh, previous case here one null, here one null. But after combining you want only one null in this. Then who we have done? Who we have to do? You, if you observe this one, in S1 string original characters are there except null. Original characters are there except null. Then how to know how many characters are there in this? You have the built-in function that is string length. Use the built-in function string length, it will give the total number of characters in S1. 
then once you know s1 how many characters are there here 1 2 3 4 then you start from fifth you start from fifth in this case you start here you point here in second string you come here in first string you go here in second string you come here then take this one and copy here take first element of second string copy at this index whatever in this case 0 1 2 3 fourth index you take the first index element of second copy at fourth index of s1 then increment this come here this is this is empty then here also come to next then take the second element of s2 then copy here then copy here then increment he come here then you here also come here then this take take this to copy here. same thing we have done here we will move here up to this then i will come to this then i will take p i will copy here right i will come to this then i will take r i will copy here i will come to next i will take o i will copy here then g then r m a then at the end i will write the null at the end i will write the null then i will display s1 i will display s1 right this we have done in string concatenation then next copy string next copy string right i have two strings string 1 and string 2 since i want to copy content of string 1 to string 2 i want to copy content of string 1 to string 2 again there is a built in function string copy all already built in function is available string copy if you string str cpy then str1 comma str2 str2 will be copied to str1 str2 will be copied to str1 automatically if you display str1 then you will get copied string right str2 will be copied to str1 right after that if str1 is initially empty assume that str1 is initially empty there is no values str1 doesn't have any value str2 is having hello assume that initially str1 don't have any value right this is everything is empty everything is empty but str2 i have hello right if i use this one then str2 will copy str at that at the end str1 also contains hello str2 also contains hello how this will be done again right how this will be done if you use the built in function directly it does but he is expecting you to don't use this function you write code for this you write code for this right then you stay here you copy this you take here you copy this right you take here you copy this right then one more is there string compare string compare string compare again there is str cmp str cmp right str cmp if i use if, if this is a copy i'll explain the same example i am taking same example i'll use string compare right again there is one more function str cmp str cmp same str1 str means i have two strings str1 and str2 i would like to check whether two strings are equal or not whether the content of two strings whether equal or not right if it is equal i will display equal if some case string 1 may be greater than string 2 then i will display string 1 is greater than string 2 or some case string 1 may be less than string 2 uh, at that time i will display string 1 is less than string 2 right how, how how to say string 1 is less than string 2 yes if this is a this is b string 1 contains a string 2 uh, contains b then which is a greater uh, greater uh, string second one is a greater uh, string again as i told every character in c stores with ascii number every character in c stores with ascii number means every character has individual number right for example a is having 45 assume that a is having 45 number a is not represented as it is a a will be represented in ascii code that the ascii code of a may be assuming that ascii code of a is 45 assume that ascii code of a is 45 then b is 46 b is 46 then you are comparing whether a is greater than b you are comparing whether a is greater than b e is 45 is greater than 46 no then which string is better definitely second string is better because b is better value like that internally it does even though you are comparing character by character but character is stored in ascii characters ascii values right as a example i have given if a ascii value is 45 then b is 46 then c is 47 like this right that's why same since we are using compare i'll just i'll explain this one with the compare not with copy string 1 is having hello string 2 is also having hello are both the strings are equal yes now it is equal right if i use str comp there is a function str comp str1 str2 if i use that function then it gives yes both are equal means both are equal in the sense if it returns 0 if it returns 0 then 
will take equal. We will take equal. If it returns non-zero, then not equal. If that STR CMP, not STR CPY, STR CPY is for copy. Now I am explaining CMP. Compare STR CMP, STR one, STR two. If both these strings are equal, then that function will return zero. If this function is return zero, then we will say both these strings are equal. If that function returns non-zero, then we will say strings are not equal. If that STR CMP, if it returns non-zero value, then it will return non-zero value. If both these strings are not equal, at that time we will display both these strings are not equal. Again, you can check whether which string is greater, which string is uh, smaller. Right? That's why. How that? Then how to do that one? String comparison. How to do that one? How to do? We have the Values in string one. First character is in zeroth index H. First index E. Second index I. Third index uh, L. The second index L. Third index L. Then fourth index O. Fifth index none. Fifth index none. Sixth index none. So we don't have. Here also same thing, right? Then now we would like to compare. How to compare? Take the first character of this string. First character of this string. Then check. Both are equal. Yes. If both are equal, then only you move next. Because we are checking for equal. You are checking for equality. Okay, then only you move next, right? Then you move next. Then here also you move next. Here also you move next. Then compare these two. Check whether this is equal to this. Yes. Yes. If it is equal, then only. If there is a equality, then only you move next. If there is no equality, then what to do with other? If even though if they are, equal, for example, here H I, here H I H E. Remaining thing is same. H I L L O H E L L O. Assume that H I L L O H E L L O. You are you are comparing for equality. Here, here is I. Here is E. If there is no, these two characters are equal, then the entire string is not equal. Whatever may be the next characters, whatever may be the next character, that's why unnecessarily don't move. Only if there is equality, then only you go next. Right? Here is equal. Then go. Oh, then how? Till how? When? Till how many characters you will move? None. Till you have to move till the null. Means both. If both the strings are Entered null, then definitely string is equal. When both will reach to null, when both will reach to null, that time string is equal. If both are not null, the strings definitely both are not. Equal. What happens in this case? For example, here, here you have H E L L, here you have H E L L, here you have H E L L O, H E L L O, here you have H E L L means here only have null, here only will get null. Till this you will get same. Till this number you will get same. But when you go here. Since in this string you have null, here you have zero. O, here you have O. Then not equal. These two characters are not equal. Till this strings are equal, but once it comes here, not equal. Then at that time strings are not equal because you have H E L L, here you have H E L L O. Like this we have to do the comparison, right? This is actually in our problem we don't have copy, we have comparison. But I got this example. That's why I explain again by taking this example. Only thing is S T R C M P. Built-in function is available. Again, parameters are same. We will compare here. Right? This is what theory. Then directly we will go to program. Now we will go to program. Then I will explain with the program. Right? Here. As I told, hash in queue string dot h, hash in queue string dot h, because you string length function and string compare function are listed in string dot h header file. That's why I have included this one. Right? Then next. Wide main, as you know, wide main. I am using some in some of the text, uh, some of the compilers. You may be using integer main, wide main, all those things depending on the compiler. Wide main, then integer c, integer l. I require two variables of type integer. That is a c and l. Then I require string variables because this is a program on a string. That how to declare a string? String variable we are declaring by using the character dot type. Character string one of fifty. Character uh, string character string two of fifty. Right? These are two. Arrays of type string, two arrays of type string. That is str1, str2. Then you know how to declare array, single dimensional array. All all concepts I have explained in lab also, as well as you might have studied in theory also. Right? Then these functions I require. Then function prototype you have to declare. Function prototype either in some of the program they then prototypes may be above the main or This is a local global declaration. This is a local declaration. I, again, you know, you may be knowing this type of declaration. I am declaring means prototype. I am declaring means I am telling my I am telling my compiler that in future such functions will encounter. 
once you encounter such fixed uh, functions you don't get confused that's why yeah. well in the head only we are intimating that is integer string len means i am writing a function for string len whatever i have told built in function str le len we are writing our own function for str le len then i have to pass it accepts one input it accepts one input again which type that is a character array that it always will expect expect accepting character array this is function for calculating a string length then again i have to compare string compare again i have to means he is expecting in your program you write a program for calculating a string length comparison and concatenation that's why integer string comparison integer string comparison again as i told if strings are equal it returns zero if strings are not equal it returns always non zero that's why return type of this the function is integer then return type of this function is always integer because that built in function always is returning string length always length of a string is an integer that's why this is the return type then this these are the parameters right i i, I hope you know the uh, regarding this in function chap right then i am again named that string comparison function string comp string comp what function the string comp was doing same function same operation we are doing in this function right as i told it requires two parameters it requires two parameters that is two strings again two strings it require that's why i am telling that always it accepts two variables of type string that is string 1 and string 2 right then next string concatenation string concatenation we are not expecting from this right that is that's why we are we have given void right we have taken void means when string is returning nothing when any function is returning writing the nothing that time we will use a void when you don't want to return anything from that function that time you write void right if you want integer type return from this function integer if you want floating point return type of, for, from that function then float then if you want character type return from that function you write ca character here these data type will tell what type of data that function is returning what type of data that function is returning then these are parameters this is here parameter passing concept we are discussing in future right that is a, again string cat component is requires two parameters right both are of type string here right this is regarding prototype declaration with respect to those functions then next printf just for user friendliness we have printed printer user defined string functions printf means this is a user defined string function program just i want to name this program that's why we have declared here then we have given a choice here in this program we are using a switch already i have explained switch program in the class only in the lab only that regarding that here means we are giving a choice for the user if you press one if you press one then what you are doing you are executing string length means you whenever you would like to calculate the length of a string whenever you would like to calculate the length of a string just to press one just to press one then whenever you want to concatenate two strings whenever you want to concatenate two strings you press two whenever you compare a string whenever you compare string comparison whenever you want to compare the strings string comparison if you would, would like to compare the two strings then press 3 right you have to remember one means for length two is for concatenation three is for string comparison right then then you enter means you enter these choices you enter your choice here which operation you would like to do which operation you would like to that message also displayed first these information will be available on your monitor then read these information then this will also displayed you enter your choice this will also be displayed enter your choice then uh, among three choices you enter which choice you want, would like to perform right either you may require to perform one somebody may be required to perform second somebody may be required to perform three means so those who want to compare they will press three those who want to concatenate definitely they will press two those who want to calculate the length of a string definitely they will press one right then read the choice read the choice 1 2 3 that's why i am reading scan f percentage d and c and c if somebody presses 1 then c will hold 1 if somebody presses 3 then c will hold 3 then it will come to switch c switch c already i have in one of the program in one of the lab i explained how switch works right then switch takes always input of this then starts comparing with case number case values starts comparing with case values for example somebody have entered it choice 2 then c is 2 then you have taken c then switch will start comparing it takes this value then comes to case value first 
then is this value is equal to this value is 2 equal to 1 no then comes to next then takes that c value then is 2 equal to 2 yes in this case 2 if it is also not uh, true then it goes to next like this it goes to next then last is the default value if nothing is matched then it will execute default then comes out of the switch switch end is here it comes out of the switch in this case like that switch works right I, I hope you know you may be knowing switch working right and I also explain none of the lab now then if somebody enters one somebody enters one what does it mean means you want to compare the you want to check the length of a string you would like to check the length of a string then c is one switch c it comes all by default always it starts from first case always switch starts from first case e is one equal to one yes in this case one equal to one in this case one equal to one then it enters into this case it will enter into it will follow that case if it doesn't match then only it goes to next case if there is a match with respect to case will be followed if here is a match it comes here if there is no match it will not come here only it goes to next like that in this case there is a match now it comes here means what is your intention you would like to check the length of a string you would like to check the length of a string that's why i have to write code for that information i have to write code for this right what is that then first you require a string right you have to enter the string then that string length you have to check that's why print f enter a string print f enter a string then you will enter a string in previous example if i take if a previous example if i take hello assume that you entered hello assume that you will enter hello then hello will be there in yes Hello will be there in string 1. Hello will be there in str1. Right? Then how many characters are there in hello? H, E, L, L, O. 5 characters. You would like to check. Actually you would like to check how many characters are there in hello. Right? That's why I have written a built-in. We are not using a built-in function. We are writing a function for that which calculates the length of a string. Which calculates length of a string. Then I will call that function. I will call that function which function I have written for calculating a string. I, we are not using built-in function here that is strlen is a built-in function if I use strlen then in the bracket str1 if I give directly it gives the value here but we are not using that one because he has told that you write code for that that's why we are writing our own function that is string underscore len we are writing our own function that function I have to call whenever you want to calculate the string length whenever you assign some work to somebody whenever you want that work from that guy you have to call that guy right same thing i have assigned string length calculation for this function i have assigned the work string length calculation work for this function that's why whenever i want to calculate the string length i have to call that guy that's why i am calling this guy then what i have to give to him i have to give first string to that guy you take this string then give me the length of that string you take this string then count the number of characters in that string then return the count return me the count that's why first i have to give the string this string I entered, that string is hello. Where is that hello string? Hello string is str in str1. I have to provide this one. This is passing. I have to pass the parameter. I am passing a parameter. Right? That is string 1. I am giving string 1 to string length function. Then string length function will take this string 1. Then it counts the number of characters. Then it returns that, that value. That value I am storing in L. Whatever values it is returning, after execution it will return something that whatever it has written something whatever something i am telling that i have to store here that i am storing l means after executing of this statement l will contain length of the string l variable will contain length of the string then if you want to print that length of the string just print the l print the l that's why i have printed length of percentage s string is percentage b means length of hello string is 5 it will print 5 because that's why I used L here, percentage D. As I told, this is an integer. L is always integer. That's why percentage D. Length of string 1 is hello. What is the length? Then length is there in L. What is L? 5. 5 will be printed. Then break. After execution, each case you have to break. Means once that case is over, use the break. Break takes execution out of the switch. Break will take execution out of the switch. Means it will come here directly. Out of the switch means it comes to here. This is exit of the switch. It comes here, then executes. Right? Then what happens here? Once you call, this is a calling function. This is called calling function. I am calling the function. Which function does this work? What do work? Length calculation work. Who is doing length calculation work? String, strlen, yes, string length. Because that's why I told here. That I have told here. At the beginning only I have told. Right? Then that I have to call. 
how to call this is the calling once i call this one directly my execution comes here next it will it will stop the execution of this program here only it will stop the execution of this directly it from this statement directly it comes to this here yes integer string length this is a small program for calculating the length of a string i have written it will come here the string length character x of the actual parameter this is the formal parameter whatever you have sent there you have sent a string right you have given something to some guy right you have you have brought milk assume that you have brought milk you want to give that milk to some other person then whenever he is coming for taking you have to bring some container to take that one he has to bring some container to take that one when you are giving the liquid then you have to bring such a container that it must hold the liquid it must hold the liquid that's why you are sending the array you are sending from that side string one is array character array that's why when you are sending the array then what who has come for receiving here he must be of type array then which type array character array which type again array character array there should not be integer array there should not be integer array because they, from that side characters are coming that's why character again not single character is coming group of characters are coming when group comes then you must declare array that's why i declared it is there is no compulsory that the name of uh, actual parameter and formal parameter must be same i hope you know name of actual parameter and formal parameter must be same here this is actual parameter this is formal parameter whatever i used in called call function this is called call function this is called call function whatever i use this is formal parameter means it is not compulsory that if uh, gents faculty means uh, boy went for giving the milk it is not compulsory from that side a same uh, boy has to come somebody has to come somebody has to come right that must be up like this that must be up like this right that's why are any anyone may come from that house anyone may come right that's why like this this is he is coming then you will send that one then that string will come now hello will come to x now hello is earlier in main program calling program hello was there in string one in called program hello will come to x hello is is there in x now onwards my string is there in not str1 my string is there in x array my string is there in x array that's why i have to use in x now i want integer i because i am using a loop here i want integer i initial integer i i initialize to zero since i am using while loop then i have to start counting how to start counting then x of i means x of zero means x of zero what is the index array index zero what is there value hello i have told hello is there in zeroth index which value is there if you see the previous example h x of zero what is the content h e is h not equal to null yes h is not equal to null then i plus plus i was zero now i will become one i will become one then again goes back to loop loop right then i is incremented now i is one e is x of one what is there in x of one h hello means e e is e is not equal to null yes e is not equal to null then come i plus plus i becomes two i becomes two right x of two h e two means it was index l is there e is l is not equal to null yes then i plus plus three then x of three one more real x of three hello h e l l o right one three yes l l is not equal to null then i plus plus i becomes four i becomes four then fourth index x of four o is there x of four o is there e is o is not equal to null yes then i becomes plus i plus plus five then x of five x of five what is there null is there now e is null not equal to null no null equal to null condition fails you are checking for not equal but in this case null will become null null will become null that's why condition fails then comes out then return i what is the value i i is five i is five because when i becomes five your condition becomes fail that time you came out of the loop once condition fails then while loop comes out then you are returning i you are returning i is of type integer that's why what type of data is if this function is returning integer that's why i have to mention integer here what type of data it is giving back to call function what type of data it is giving back to call function it is giving back to call function is integer type that's why we have declared integer right i it will return i then i comes what is that that is a 5 then 5 will come here then when when it when it comes here it brings 5 that 5 i am assigning to l that 5 i am assigning to l since 5 is integer that's why this variable i have declared here integer type then length of string is there in l now that function side length of string was there in i 
but I have uh, initialized to L here, right? That is fine. Then I will print that one here. Then print that length of percentage yes means length of hello string is five. It will print length of hello string is five. Then break. Then comes out of the switch. Then comes out comes out of the switch. Then it stops. Get C H stop. It will stop the program. Means you you would like to you are interested only for calculating a length of a string, right? Then what happens? One right. You would like to check the concatenation of string. You would like to you are interested in concatenating string. Definitely you will press two. Definitely you will press two. Then it will means C is equal to two because the and C. When you are reading and C, he is pressing two, right? C is two. Then switch C means switch two. Then I by default always comes to case one. Always starts with the case one. Then E is two equal to one? No. If there is no match, it will not follow that case. It will not follow that case. Directly comes to next case, right? Then C is two. E is this value? E is equal to this value? E is C value is equal to value represented here? Yes. C is also two. Here also two. Then there is a match. Once there is a match, then it follows that case. Whatever code you have written in front of that case, everything will be executed, right? Then it comes here. Since you are Combining two strings. That's why you require two strings. You require two strings, right? String one and string two. You want to combine, join. That's why when you enter string one, you enter string one. If you take players, no programming. Example we have taken no programming, right? Then print it. You enter string. Then you will enter string here. Example again. If I take the same example previous example, no, no, I will take. Right? Now you will enter K N O W, K N O W, right? Then String one contains str one contains k n o w. Then last character is null. Last byte of null. Last character is null. Then print it. Enter string two. Program or programming. Whatever you want. Programming or program. Right? What is that programming? We will see that. No program. Right? P r o g r a m. Program. Right? Then I will enter program. I will enter program. Right? Now I will enter program. Then that will come in string two. Str two. Means no is in str1 program is there in str2. There are two strings. String one contains no k n o w. The string two contains program p r o g a m p r o g a m. Right? These are the strings I have here. Then now I want to join those strings. Now I want to join those strings. How we are joined here? How we are joined in this case? Right? How we are joined like this? Means I want both initially no is there in str1 program is there in str2. But at the end, I want str1 must contain no program. Here they are taken s1, s2. We are taken str1, str2. Only difference, I have named array name. They are named array name as s1 and s2. We are naming array name as str1 and str2. Right? At the ultimate result, I want in s1. And that is string one. Right? Then I have told how to do this one. Right? How to do that one? Now what you have to do? Then there is again we have written one function. Again we are not using this built-in function. As I told, there is built-in function is available. Str cat. Just if I execute this one, it will give me the direct. It will give the result to back to me. Directly it gives the result, but he is telling don't use this function. You write a code for this. That's why we are writing the code for this that we have written. Who is writing code? There is a function. We have named that function. That guy means who is doing this work. That guy we have named it as string underscore cat. I have named that function name as string underscore cat. It is returning nothing. We are not expecting from that one. Just you can take me blue. I'll take care of um, next section, right? Then always how many parameters it is expecting? Two. First string, second string. That's why again I have to pass two parameters here. I am passing two parameters. That is string one, string two. In this case, string one is no, string two is program. Means I am passing no and program separately. While sending, I am sending separately no and program. But when it comes back, only it comes back as a one, right? Then once when it comes back, then at that time I have. The result in str1. As I told, always the result. Result of this is always in str1. That's why if you use the reverse, s2 minus s1, s2 comma s1, then result will be in s2. That's why very careful. By default, the result is in first string, right? That's why result result is in str1. Then I have to print result. Now, if I print result, then what I'll get? I'll get this. No program. No program. Earlier, if you get before this, how would I get? You have to display S1. You have to display S2. Then only you, you are getting no program. Now, but if I display only S1, I'll get no program. No program, right? In pre, before concatenation, if you want both these things, then you have to display separately first S1, then next S2. 
that time you are getting no quorum. Now if I display only S1, I will get both these things. Right? That, that's why I have, I have printing str1 because I know that result of content result is in str1. Right? Then str1. Right? Then break. After execution of this, then again you have to, you want to, you would like to stop. Again it comes out of the uh, switch. This is calling program. Once this again same, if you call this one, it comes to call program. It comes here. String cat. Means concatenation. Right? Again, from that side, you have passed two parameters. Again, those two parameters are of type array, of type character. Array of type character. That's why same guy has to come here. Character array type. Character array type because two people are coming with the same data. Again, with the same data. Again, here also two people has to come to receive same data. Right? Same. Again, same type of people has to come. That's why here from this side, receivers are coming with the character arrays. Again, as I told, there must be no, not compulsion that both the array names must be same, right? Those are actual parameters, these are formal parameters. That's why we have named S1, we have named S2 arrays. But up type character array, up type character array, right? Means uh, that whatever there was in str1, it will come in S1. Whatever there was in calling program str2, it will come in S2. What is there in S1? S1 contains no, S2 contains program. No will come in S1, program will come in S2, right? That's why again I want two loops, two variables, up type integer ij. Then J, as I told, you must know the string length. If you know the string length, then after that, that string you start copying. If you start copying from this, then this will go. Assume that here, if you start copying from this, then no will go. You will not get no, that's why you have to leave this space. If you see the result, K, N, O, W is there as it is, whatever was there in string 1. Earlier string 1 contains K, N, O, W. In string 2, you have to keep retain as it is. Means we have to keep the original value of string 1. That's why you have to keep. Means Whenever you are starting joining, after these many characters you start copying. That's why we must know how many characters are there in the original string. That is in S1. How many characters are there in S1? That we have to find. That's why we are doing what we are doing here. String length. We calculate for string length. Here I use the built-in function. You see. Here I am using a built-in function. Purposefully I use the built-in function. I might have used this function because already I have written program for a string length calculation. Already I have used program for string length calculation. But just to show how built-in function work, I have used directly built-in function here, str, len, there is a built-in function available. Which string length you want? I want length of s1. I want length of s1 because I want to copy the other other string contained from from last character of first string. From last character of first, that's why I want the length. Means at first I know how many characters are there in original string s1. Then after knowing only, then I have to start copying in remaining field. That's why I have to leave these many characters. You don't alter. If you start copying from here, then K will go. If you start copy from P, then N will go. Right? You lose this content. That's why you have to leave these many places. places then you have to start upward. That's why you must know the length. If how many characters are there? We are doing that one. Right? We are doing here. That we are calculating string length. It will give string length integer. It will be there in J. How many characters will be there? How many characters are there? No. No means one, two, three, four. It will return four. It will return. 4 here, then 4, j contains 4, now I have to start from 4th index, now I have to start from 4th index, right, then while s2 of i, again why, how, many, how many elements I have to copy, I am copying from s2 in s1, but till how many, till I reach null, till I reach null I have to copy, because up to null there are characters, once I reach null means there are no characters, that's why I have to take this character I have to copy, but how many times I have to repeat copying, till I reach null. That's why what we are doing here s2 of i not equal to null s2 of i not equal to null. What is i? i is 0 because in s2 string where is the first character at 0th index? Where is the first character in s2 string? At 0th index. This is at 0th index. With 0th index I have to take and I have to copy it in 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4th index of s1. I have to copy at 4th index of s1. Right, then I have to copy second index of S2, then I have to copy fifth index of S1, right, that I have to do. For that, that's why S2 of i, means S2 is zeroth index, check, is it a null? If it is not null, then only you start copying, if it is a null, then the string is over, don't copy, right. Here S2, S2 of i is P, S2 of i is P, P is, P is not equal to null, yes, P is not equal to null. Then, where you have to copy, you have to copy in S1. You have to copy in S1, you have to copy in S1, you have to copy in S1 where 4th index. 
that to copy in S1 fourth index. Take S1 S2 zeroth index, copy it in S1 fourth index. That we are doing here. That's why copy S1 of J. What is J? You have written length. Length is four. Four. That is S1 of J. It means S1 of four. What you are copying? S2 of zero. You are copying. At S1 of four, you are copying S1 S2 of zero. You see. At fourth index of S1. At fourth index of S1, you are copying zeroth index of S2. Zeroth index of S2, you are copying at fourth index of S1. Right? The next first index of S2, you have to copy it fifth index of S1. Fifth index of S1. Like this, you have to repeat till you reach null in S2. Right? Then J plus plus I plus plus. J plus plus I plus plus means after copying, you have to move here. Then after taking, again you have to come here. This you have to copy here. Then next, come here. Then come here. You take this one. You copy here. Then increment this. Increment this. You take this. You. How many times? In S2 till you reach null. In S2 you till you reach null. That we have done here. Right? Like this, it will be copied. Once you reach null, then it comes out. Once you reach null, it comes out. Then at the end, you have to insert the null. Because once you reach null, you came out. You have not copied that one. Right? In S2 of i, S2 of i, S2 of i in the sense, what is the value S2 of i? S2 of i is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. When S2 of i becomes 7, S2 of i becomes 7, S2 of i becomes 7. Is S2 of i is not equal to null? No, null. S2 of i is null. Then when is null is when S2 of i becomes null, it came out. Here in null you are not copied here. In this loop you are not copied to null. When that becomes null, it came out. That's why it is your responsibility. In that last index, you have to copy the null. You have to copy the null. Null we are not copied here because when it becomes a null, we have come out of before copying. We came out before copying. That's why outside the loop in S1 of J means last index here. At this index, this index I have to copy the null. That we have done here. That we have done here. Right? Then this. Then your result will be there in S1. Your result will be there in S1. Again, we have not written anything. Then also we have copied, we have displayed here. We have displayed here, right? We are nothing. It has to be written, but still we are we could able to display the output because this is a pointer concept here. As array name by default is a pointer. Pointer is the address. Pointer is the address. Whatever changes you have made this side, whatever changes you have made this side, you have made at the address level. You have made at the address level, not at the values level, not at the variable level. We have not made the changes at the variable level. We have directly made. Change at the address level, right? Address remains same whether you call it in the main program, whether you call, whether you refer it in the calling program, whether you use it in the calling program, whether you use it in the call program. Address remains same in the computer. That's why, since array name is address, whatever changes you have made in this program, definitely both changes you have made it in the address level. Then, I, when you use the address of that va va variable, then changes will be affected here. That's why. We have nothing but this is the void function. This is of type void. Nothing it has written. Then also you could able to display that str1 here in main program calling program because array names are pointers, right? Then break. Afterwards break. Then comes out of the switch. Then program terminates, right? This is regarding concatenation. Then next, if somebody is interested in comparison, somebody is interested in comparison, right? Then he has to we have to execute comparison. At that time we'll press three. Till plus three, right? Then C, C is three. Then comes to six. That is the value in C. Starts comparing with value in this. E C value and this value are same? No, because C is three. This is one. There is no match. It will not go to that case. Then comes to next case. E C is equal to this value. E C is three. This is two. E is three equal to two? No. Then comes to next. No. E C value equal to this value? Yes, in this case, because C is equal to three. This will is also three. There is a match. Then comes, then comes here, right? Enters into that. Follow the that case, right? Again here, when you want to compare, you require two values. You want to compare two. You have to require two strings. That's why we have to read two strings here. Enter string one. Then again here, same example. I will take hello. I will take hello, right? I will enter hello here, right? Then str contains str one also contains hello. Then enter str two. I will enter same hello. Means both strings. Contains hello because previous program here I have taken hello here, right? That we will take again same thing. Just here one also hello, just here two also hello, right? Then we will start comparing. How we are start? How we have to start comparing? Go here, go here, 
compare then if equal then come next if equal then come next like this right same thing we are doing here right then who is doing that operation we are written one function string c o m p we are not using a built in function we are written our own code for comparison then as i told it requires two values string 1 string 2 then i will pass i will submit this to that function then that result will uh, that result will come here that result will store here right then here it will come here this is called function this is called function as i as i told in previous function same thing first string will come in s1 second string will come in s2 then we have to start comparing i require i and l variable integer type we have taken then we have to start for i equal to 0 then we start comparing string 1 of i not equal to none all string 2 of i not equal to none you have to repeat if any if both this uh characters both the strings becomes none then you have to stop this loop will stop if any one string is not equal to none then this re- this will repeat right here if you take string 1 hello string 2 also hello string 1 of 0 is not equal to none yes string 2 of 0 is not equal to null yes if any one is true true because you are using r you are using r here if any one condition becomes true then this entire condition will become true since you are using r but if you are using and then both condition must be true this is one condition this is one condition since you are using r either this is true or this is true this entire condition whatever you have mentioned in the bracket whatever you have mentioned in the bracket entire condition becomes true right it comes here right if this condition is true then it comes here if s1 of i not equal to s2 of i in this case s1 of 0 is not equal to s2 of 0 is hello is h is not equal to this h no yes both are equal both are equal you are comparing for not equal no both are equal if both are equal then it will not enter into this if it will not enter into this if because you are comparing it for not equal in this case both are equal because you have stored hello in both the strings first character in both the strings are h right that's why you are comparing it for not equal definitely this condition fails it will not enter here it will come back to loop i plus plus then i plus plus str1 of i is not equal to null e is there in this case both will give g1 if any one gives one it condition as i told condition becomes true right one right it will give one then condition becomes true enters here if str1 means s1 s1 of 1 means e second first index means second character second h after h you have e that is in first index e is e of s1 is not equal to e of s2 no both are equal again it will not come here right it goes back right then i plus plus h e l right then second index not equal to null yes then comes here e is l of first string is not equal to l of second string no both are equal then comes here then next l condition becomes true then l true no comes here then last index o right e is o of s1 is not equal to is not equal to null yes then e is o of s1 is not equal to o of s2 no equal then comes here now goes here now goes here then s1 of that index h e l L O that is the fifth index zero one two three four fifth index S one of five here if you go to S one of five means S one of five is S one of five not equal to null no yes null in this case in this case it is null in this case now you are comparing for not equal to null it is null this condition fails then you will get zero here then it will come here any one is also true then condition becomes true that's why you have to check for both. This is not true, but it may be true. It may be true in this case. It is also not true, but once again you will check. E is S two of five. Again, because both the both the string hello is there. S two of five is not equal to none. No, this is also none. Because S two of five is also none. Both are none in this case. If both are none, then result becomes zero. Then now it comes out of the loop. Now it comes out of the loop. In this case, it comes here. If S one of five, S one of five, I I is five now. E is S one of five equal to equal to none? Yes, because you are here. S one of five, you are here. String one of five, you are here. Is equal to none? Yes, condition is true. And S two of five equal to equal to none? S two of five equal to equal to none? Yes, this is also none. Then return zero. Then return zero. It means L equal to zero. L equal to zero. Then return L. 
then returnal means it comes once return executes it comes to calling program it comes to calling program l will come here what is l l is 0 that l and this l will become 0 if l equal to equal to 0 what is the value in this case yes l is 0 then you are comparing it for 0 e is l equal to equal to 0 yes then print both the strings are equal both the strings are equal right next example next other example i will take for example you have h e you have only this assume that you have h e and h assume that you have h e here and h right here you have h e here null then h here only null right in first character first string you have two character that h and e then second character only have h right simple one we will take then here null is there in this case here null is there right now i will go to program now again same thing will happen h e will come here h will come here then again same for i equal to 0 then string 1 of 0 is not equal to null yes because h is there then here also h is there right then string 1 of i is not equal to string 2 of i no because both have h as i told both have h because h e and h both have h in first index right both are equal then it will come here i plus plus i plus plus means 1 s1 yes, of i that is here this e is not equal to none yes it is not equal to none but what about this is it not equal to none yes in this case it is not equal to none it is equal to none in this case it is equal to none because i have told here is none because i have taken h only in this string i have taken h only this is a none right here this condition fails but this condition is true but in, when you are using or in between these two one if any one is true then the entire condition becomes true okay, that's why it will enter into mode it will come into mode then s1 of i that is this s1 of i s1 of i then you are equal to not equal to s2 of i s1 of i not equal to s2 of i yes because here e is there here null is there in this case because you have taken h only in this in this uh, string you have stored h in this store you have stored he right yes these two are not equal these two are not equal here you will get e here you will get null right then if this is the case then you enter here now we will enter here then you check now directly if you want to just if you want to return the equal or not you can give the return the equal or not but here we are checking greater or small again here we are checking greater or small also then which string is the greater here as per this which string is the greater so this string is the greater because h e and h definitely this string is the greater right that one also you can do right then if s1 of i is greater than s2 of i s1 of i is greater than s2 of i right means e is greater than none yes e is greater than then then return one return means l equal to one l equal to one then in this case break break means it comes out of the loop it comes here it comes here this condition also fails here it comes out because because after this it will not go to else part it comes to break then once break executes it comes out of the loop right then it comes here yes one of i is not equal to null no yes yes one of i equal to null no yes one of i is equal to null no yes one of i is not equal to null yes one of i is e but you are checking with equal to you are checking for equality you are checking for equality equality condition fails here because h o s one of i is e right then condition fails then zero if 0 comes since you are using an and no need to check this one because 1 is 0 in the and operation if any one is 0 result is 0 it will not come here then return l means nothing but you are returning 1 nothing but l is 0 1 then you return 1 if you return 1 if you return 1 then l will become 1 here then compare if l equal to equal to 0 no because l is 1 you are comparing with 0 condition fails else if l is greater than 0 yes in this case l is greater than 0 l is greater than 0 then print f string 1 is greater than string 2 string 1 is greater than string 2 right because he h e is greater than h right like this you can do for less than also if l is less than means at that time you will get this right this is how program works right i will execute this program you see you can see the output execute right here user defined functions find 
string length press 1 if you want to check the length of a string then you have to press 1 if you would like to check the concatenation then press 2 if you would like to check comparison then press 3 then I will now I will press 1 means I would like to check length of a string then enter the string what string h s i t I will enter what is the length of a string 4 it has to give me 4 yes length of a string is 4 length of a string is 4 right then somebody is interested in other option for example somebody would like to check concatenation that time definitely will press 2 this choice is 2 means you would like to check concatenation then you enter string 1 this string h s i t h s i t then i would like to need associate need s o s h i need associate i want to concatenate h s i t need associate i want in string 1 i want h s i t original input is h s i t is in string 1 need associate is in string 2 but result i want string 1 must contain h s i t that's why i want concatenation then result you see concatenated string is h s i t need associate only one you will get that one in only one string you have one earlier they were separate now we are getting only one right this is one then for example if somebody would like to compare that is definitely has to press 3 definitely has to press 3 then you will press 3 then you enter that is h s i t right you would like to compare then second string again same h s i t are both the strings are equal yes because first string also h s i t second string also h s i t now my program is to give strings are equal right both strings are equal both strings are equal suppose if you give different if you give different for example 3 your choice is comparison right uh, h s you have given right then h s i have given one string h s other string h s i are both the strings are equal no both definitely both strings are not equal then which string is better here second string is better because h s i three characters here you have two characters right h s i characters again in some time are alphabetical again a b even though both is both here one more example i will show here three characters two characters right definitely this string is better that's why string 2 is better than string 1 yes string 2 is better than string 1 right in next one more example i will show one more example that is for example again 3 only here a not a b then a now are both the strings are equal no because one string is b one string is a right then which string is better here in this case no, means no. in previous example I, had, I have just simply I given number of characters number of characters that is the case you very easily can identify here but if you go by number of characters both are number of characters the same here also one here also one then which string is better as I told always numbers no, characters will be stored in ASCII format ASCII format is that is a number if A is 45 then B is 46 like this if A is 45 B is 46 then 47 40 like this among let now then which is a greater string b is a greater b is a greater string right that is string 1 is greater than string 2 string 1 is greater than string 2 like this this program will execute right please go through this program and execute in your work right thank you